Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, I am super excited because it is that time of the year again where I get to share with you the top 10 best selling Korean skincare products of the past 12 months. Once a year, usually around August or September, the biggest Korean skincare and beauty retailers release their top 10 bestsellers list. I always look forward to reading these because I think, you know, the true mark of a good product is those that people buy time and time again. It's that volume of sales that really drives these bestseller lists. I've been super prepared. I've ordered each and every one of these products, put them through their paces, and I'm going to share with you my thoughts and feelings because best selling doesn't always mean best performing. Sit back, relax, let's talk the best selling Korean skincare. Now, before we get into this video, I I would of course love to know your thoughts, feelings and opinions on any of the products I mentioned in today's video. Is this top 10 missing out on some holy grails? What product would you slot into this bestsellers list if you had your own way? Sound off in the comment section and let me know. Last year's video did really, really well. I'll find a link to it and leave it in the description box below. But I want to beat the record number of likes that we got on that video. So if you want to help a guy out, reach down, give this video a big thumbs up and a like. The more likes the video gets, the more widely YouTube will distribute it on its platform. So it's just a wonderful way of helping the channel reach as many potential Mad About Skin viewers as possible. And for that, I'm always so, so grateful. But I've got an awful lot of product to get through, so let's just cut that waffle and delve straight on in. I've collated all the various different top tens to kind of give what I think will be an accurate representation of the best-selling Korean skincare products. It's worth noting that these are the best-selling in the Western market. It's often the case that Korean skincare brands that we love here in the West aren't the ones that are necessarily the most popular in the Korean market itself. Different brands will promote to different territories with different marketing it's always worth bearing that in mind so these are by no means the best selling globally just here in the west these are the ones that we tend to reach for most frequently the top three positions are actually all occupied by sunscreens i'm kind of not surprised by that because let's be honest who hasn't fallen in love with the beautiful elegant formulations that korean sunscreens deliver number one and this makes me so so happy to see this is this product the beauty of joseon rice relief sunscreen I fell in love from first application. I'm wearing it today. It gives a really nice lightweight finish on the skin. It gives you the ever so slightest glow up too to kind of help you cheat a good skin day. It doesn't break you out. You can use makeup on top of it. It's just all around an absolutely wonderful tried, tested and independently verified sunscreen. One of my personal favorites. As you can see, I've got a box ready to go for when the tube that I'm currently using runs out and I never want to be without this. It glides onto the skin. It's got some great ingredients to calm and soothe as well. And I'd say it's one of those sunscreens that you actually look forward to applying. Because I've got a really oily skin type, I use this as my moisturiser and sunscreen in one. It's that hydrating. Though again, it layers beautifully on top of other moisturisers if you've got a drier skin type. Just look at that. Look at that finish on the skin. It's got the right level of dewiness. It's not too greasy. It's not too shiny. It's just a good skin day in a bottle. I absolutely love this. And I covered like a short video on the reasons why in a bit more detail, which I'll link up there. But if you did want to get your hands on this product or any of the others mentioned in today's video, I've linked them all in the description box below. And I've scoured the internet for some discount codes for you guys. So different products, not all of them, but some will come with discount codes if you want to save some of your hard earned coin. But yes, this is a bestseller for a reason and I definitely think it would fit beautifully in just about everyone's skincare routine. Now in at number two, the runner-up, the silver medalist is this product. This is the Isn't Treat Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. I imagine, though I don't know the actual sales figures, that this and the beauty of Joseon probably have a very similar sales profile because this gets just as much hype online. I personally reach for the beauty of Joseon one more because my skin isn't particularly tolerant of too much hyaluronic acid and this has a fair amount in there. If you've got a drier skin type, this might actually work better for you than that beauty of Joe someone. It all comes down to your individual skin's needs. This gets so much hype online. I think Cassandra Banks is like the number one fan of this sunscreen. You get so many other people singing its praises and it does work so, so well on the skin. This has a very similar profile, finish and price point to that beauty of Joe someone. If you see how it goes onto the skin, it leaves behind a very similar finish. Maybe ever so slightly on the dewier side than the beauty of Joe Son equivalent. So again, it'll just come down to personal preference but looks beautiful on the skin, really, really well priced for what it delivers. And again, if you're super oily like me, this can be on moisturizer and your sunscreen all in one. Now the bronze medal and the final sunscreen that's actually in this top 10 is this product. This is the Make Prem UV Defense Me Light and Refreshing Sun Essence. So there's a lot of different versions of the Make Prem sunscreens. I feel it's a little bit confusing. Um, I read these top 10 lists and I think it's this one that was in the top three in just about all of these lists. Though it can be quite difficult 
difficult to tell. They all have the same packaging. They all have very similar names. So Make Prem, if you're listening, try and differentiate them just a little bit so we actually know what we're buying. This is a chemical sunscreen, which a lot of people are huge, huge fans of. And you see a lot of praise of it online. I love the original Make Prem, which was a mineral sunscreen that was my go-to like two years ago. Then they reformulated it to be a hybrid sunscreen. It didn't work that well. Now they have different versions. They have a chemical, they have some hybrid ones, they have a mineral one, they have one that's in a sun stick, but this seems to be the best seller of the range. I actually prefer chemical sunscreens for my own skin. My skin tolerates them well. I find that they blend easier into the skin and don't leave any ashiness or white cast. They're just easier to apply. But whether you like a mineral or a chemical sunscreen, there's always going to be one out there for you. And this will be a great option for the chemical UV filter lovers. Now, if you see how this goes on to the skin, again, very, very similar finish to that Beauty of Josan one and to that Isn't Tree one. It glides on, though I would say this is probably the dewiest of all three. So you definitely get a little bit of a visible sheen to that, which, whilst that's not my personal preference for finish on the skin, because I'm oily enough anyway, if you've got a dry skin type, this might actually be preferential. You'll get that little bit of glowy that some sunscreens on a dry skin type can almost look cakey and chalky. Definitely won't get that with this, and it's a really nice finish on the skin for a dry skin type, and comes with a great price point. You just need to make sure that you're actually buying this one rather than any of the other very similarly named ones from Make Prem, which is why I've left links in the description box below. Now, before we move on to the rest of this top 10 list. Just a quick little hack. If you find that your sunscreen is a little bit on the dewy side and maybe you want it to look a little bit more matte in terms of finish on the skin, then one product I always use is this. This is the Hylamide HA Blur. This isn't a Korean product. They're based out of Canada, but this works beautifully to kind of mattify any sunscreen. You'll often see people say, just powder it down. You know, let it sink into the skin for like two minutes, then put some powder on the top to take away any shine. You can do that, but powders don't work for everyone. And I find that they can kind of make reapplication different difficult. I look a bit chalky on the skin. What I like to do is I apply my sunscreen. I look in the mirror and think, yeah, maybe in some areas it's a little bit too dewy for my preference. And I'll just go on with a very light amount of this after that sunscreen sunk in. It gives an instant blurring. It mattifies everything down and it kind of just cheats the finish that you really want on the skin, even if maybe that sunscreen isn't delivering. This is going to be discontinued in the next couple of months. So if you want to try this out, now will be the time to buy it and you can get 50% off. I've left a link again in the description box below with a code which is Decium50, capital D, all one word, and that will get you 50% off this. Definitely stock up because it's got a really good expiration date, and I use this to make my favourite sunscreens just have the right finish on my skin, no matter how oily I happen to be. Now, in at number four is this product. This is the Cosarex Propolis Honey Overnight Mask. Now, I expected some of the other Cosarex Snell Mucin products to be higher up in the list, but they did have a period in the year where they were out of stock for a whole long time, so I think that might have impacted sales, and maybe that's why they weren't higher up on the list. That's just calling that one out. This one, however, I'm actually really impressed to see on the top 10, and I'm so glad that so many people are loving it. One of my personal favorites from the COSRX brand. So this has a super high concentration of propolis. It's got some royal jelly. It's got some honey extracts. It's got some panthenol and melatonin. Just everything your skin needs to hydrate you to the gods, calm and soothe everything down. This would work really well on top of any retinoid that you're using if you're experiencing that dryness, the redness, and the irritation when you first reach for a vitamin A derivative. Plus some of this on top. It'll calm it down, hydrate the skin. It's just a really, really nice treat. Um, I use this maybe once or twice a week. I find that's enough for my oily, acne-prone skin. But if you've got a drier skin type, you could absolutely use this up to every single night for that really nice, calming, soothing, and hydrating. I also want to give a little special shout out to Cosrx because their packaging has kind of taken away one of my biggest, biggest like bugbears with Korean products. They often have those like security tamper-proof seals that are so difficult to get into. You have to start a machete your way in. You risk slipping with with the knife and I think anyone that has like motor issues with their hands would really struggle to get in the products. I love that Cosrx just have a, like a tab that you just pull off and it's easy to get into. It's tamper proof because you know that the tab hasn't been hampered with but it's so much easier than the rest of the Korean skincare that insist on those like metallic fobs that are really difficult. I know it's just the small things but you know when you're in your mid 30s like me you stop just reaching for products and you start nitpicking at those small things and Cosrx honestly I love that and I hope more brands do that. Rounding out the top five is this product. This is 
is the Madagascar Centella Hilu Seeker Blue Serum. Now, I was expecting some of the other Madagascar Centella 1004 products to be in here, particularly the ones that are focused on the original Centella formulations. And if you look at like the top 20 list, they're all in like positions like 11 through to 15. So a lot of these have just missed out on the top 10. But the one that scraped through is this. So this is the Hyaluronic Acid Seeker um, Serum. It's got some panthenol to calm and soothe the skin too. It's a really, really nice product. I haven't really experimented a lot with the Skin 1004 product range. And um, they did an awful lot of like sponsorships on launch and that kind of put me off. I thought, are they buying, you know, mentions and views rather than just letting the product speak for themselves? Having tried a few of their products, I realized actually their products are just really good. And that's probably why people are buying them time and time again. Sound in the comment section below if you've tried their sunscreen. That's next on my like wish list that I want to try. Have you had experiences with it? Would you recommend it? This is uh, the baby blue packaging. Honestly, it's like a pleasure to reach for. It is such, such a nice product that you can keep in the fridge for extra cooling. And it just glides onto the skin. It feels so luxurious. It does have a little bit of that hyaluronic acid in that my skin doesn't do that well with, but in a low concentration so you can kind of put it on the skin and know that you're not going to be using too much that could cause some sensitivity and dryness. And this is just kind of everything you need for a calming and soothing serum. Definitely would be recommending. Now in position six and seven are two Beauty of Joseon products. Now Beauty of Joseon occupied that number one spot with their sunscreen and I'm really happy to see two other products in this top ten. If you can see it from the shelf behind me, I am a sucker for Beauty of Joseon products. I love them. The formulations work really well. I think the packaging is gorgeous. I like their price point and everything is really well formulated and well thought through. You know, they're not one of these like Korean brands that produces like a million one equivalents of a single thing like COSRX do. And I kind of appreciate that. I like the fact that it's streamlined. It's a really well edited collection. They, honestly, none of their products are bad. The other two that are in, are in this top 10 are these two. The Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser and this is the Ginseng Essence Water. Uh, my favourite of these two is the Ginseng Essence Water which works so, so well as like a hydrating toner. If you're the sort of person that likes to apply your serums onto damp skin, this is a great product to use between each water-based serum step to get that extra hydration, help them absorb that a little bit better. And Jingseng is really calming and soothing. And in the long term, studies have shown it can help to brighten the complexion too. A really, really nice toner that I would totally, totally recommend. The cleanser. I don't think this is the most special product in the Beauty of Joseon collection, if I'm totally honest. I enjoyed it. It's a gel cleanser that has a nice level of foaming. It's not like super foaming and drying, but it's not, you know, also that foam free. So it's kind of a nice halfway house. I think it works best on combination skin. If you're super oily and acne prone, you might want to go for something a little bit more robust. If you've got a very dry skin type, this will prob probably still strip and dry you around the margins. So I think if you're in that combination skin zone, this could be a really nice option. It has some calming and soothing ingredients in it, and it's kind of a pleasure to use. The packaging is really good. It doesn't leak everywhere like some cleansers do, you know, like the ones from the ink list I always seem to. Just a really nice cleanser, but I'd say it's probably not my favorite. I would probably have had some of their serums in this top 10 if it was up to me. Now, position number eight goes to this product. This is the Haru Haru Wonder Black Bamboo Mist. Um, I love all things Haru Haru, bar their anti-aging. They do like an anti-aging serum in a funky little container. Didn't really like that, overpriced. The formulation wasn't great. Everything else works really well. This is the Black Bamboo Mist, which is calming, soothing, hydrating. I loved it so much, I kind of tried to match my t-shirt to it today. I don't think I got the colour combination quite right, but you know what? Props for trying, I would say. Um, love, love, love this product. Cruelty-free, as are actually all of the products, I think, in today's video, which I absolutely love. And this is the sort of mist that you can keep in the fridge, and you can just spritz throughout the day. If you're feeling a bit hot, flustered, sweaty, quick spritz of this hydrates you to the gods. It will also calm and soothe and it'll just, you know, help just calm everything down and cool you down. I love this product and whilst, you know, I have to say the whole Haru Haru line is great, bar that one anti-aging one. The cleanser's divine. Their oil is so, so beautiful, especially if you mix it with the moisturiser. And this, yeah, definitely worthy of a place in the top 10. Now, I think we're onto a good roll. There's not a single product here that I don't like. However, there are two products that round out this top 10 that I'm a little bit confused by. Let's start at the product that's in the number 9 position. This, this this is the Stratia Liquid Gold. Confused because this is definitely not a Korean skincare product. Um, most of the big Korean retailers and websites do actually sell the Stratia line. I think that's because it's quite difficult to get here in Europe. Um, so a lot of the brands will like spy up in bulk and then sell it, you know? 
I, I think Stratia keeps with the Korean skincare ethos, very gentle, well thought through, well formulated, lots of calming and soothing ingredients, including things such as Santella, that will offset any side effects you get from the actives that they include. This is one of my favourite barrier supporting moisturisers, packed full of ceramides, it's got some sea buckthorn oil, it's got a low dose niacinamide, it is a wonderful, wonderful product. And if you're looking to kind of repair your barrier function of the skin, hydrate, moisturise, do it all in one, I would definitely recommend this. I always, always have it on hand. It truly is worth its like golden status. But it's not a Korean skincare product, so I don't really know what it's doing in the top 10. However, you know what, I could have probably like skipped this one and chosen the one in 11th place. But actually, I love it so much, it's an excuse to mention them, and it is really good, even if it is a little bit of a fraud bit in this list. Then finally, in 10th place is this. This is the Axis Y Dark Spot Correcting Glow Serum. Not really impressed with this. Axis Y are doing a lot of paid sponsorships with influencers at the moment, which is why you're seeing a lot more of their brand in general. But I've been pretty underwhelmed with it all. I like the Mugwort Mask. Um, that works really well to brighten the skin and it will help mattify anything, particularly if you're super oily. But other than that, the rest I've been disappointed with. This is a dark spot correcting. I, I don't get what it's going to do. This has got activated niacinamide. That's just marketing. Um, it's got squalane and it's got some fruit extracts in. To brighten the skin, you need things like azelaic acid. You need tranexamic acid licorice root you know there's lots of active ingredients that will work with that a five percent concentration of niacinamide and some squalane isn't going to do it i do like the packaging though so i will give them that i do like the packaging but this is going to do nothing for your dark spots and discoloration if you're looking for some better alternatives i captured some of my favorites in a recent video that i'll link up there check that out this is a bit of a firm pass so there you have it guys, the top 10 best-selling Korean skincare products, at least here in the West anyway. Um, I was much more impressed with this list than I was with last year's list, where much more of them were fails than holy grails. I actually like all by the Axis Y one in today's list, so I think, you know what, I take back what I said earlier in the video. In this case, I think the best sellers are the best performers at the same time. Do you disagree with anything that I've said in this video? Let me know in the comment section below, and wherever you are in the world guys. Stay safe, stay well, I love your skin. Take care. Bye!